welcome back. If you didn't check out the previous episode on how we made off, make sure you check that out first because this one is just a bit of continuation into that. If I log out of our application right now and go back into login, this doesn't look very pretty. And like I promised before, it is actually quite simple for us to get this done. Laravel uses something called front end presets. A front end preset is a way for us to plug in different front end libraries. What are we talking about here? Of course, we're talking about JavaScript. We're talking about things like React and Vue and everything else that the community has to offer. If we type in PHP Artisan, we have this preset section. Let me scroll up and here it is. So a preset, it swaps out the front end scaffolding for the application. That's a little bit cryptic. Remember, you can always run PHP Artisan Help Preset, the name of the command. Now we get a little bit more. Okay, so for arguments, we need a type. The preset types are none, that's what Laravel ships with, Bootstrap, View, and React. So most of the time, you're gonna pick probably Bootstrap and maybe View, or Bootstrap and maybe React. So to do that, we'll run PHP Artisan Preset Bootstrap. Obviously, this is talking about Twitter Bootstrap. But let me go ahead and run this command now. What actually changed is inside my webpack.mix.js. So here we have this notion of public CSS. Okay, we haven't really explored where that is, but inside that same directory under SAS, we do have app.scss. And now we have Bootstrap. Here it is. And this is the full blown Bootstrap. So Laravel has something called Laravel Mix. Laravel Mix makes this front end stuff fairly simple and it is quite complicated due to all the different Webpack configurations that need to happen. It has a very simple syntax. You'll do something like mix.js. This is in my webpack.mix.js file and that is sitting in the root of the directory of the entire project. And we can bring in some JavaScript. We can bring in some SAS. You can copy files. You can do a lot. It is very, very powerful. If we go back into here, it does give you a bit of a warning. It says, well, you need to run npm install and then npm run dev. A little bit outside of the scope of Laravel, but npm is a package manager for JavaScript libraries. Now you may be thinking, well, this is CSS. I know it's a little bit confusing. It's a lot to take in, but all you need to know is we need to run npm install and then npm run dev. So let's go ahead and run one at a time. We'll say npm install. If you are unable to run this npm install command, one thing you do need to do is install npm in your local machine. It's actually quite simple to do. Let me show you that while we wait for this to finish up. I'll jump into the browser. You'll have to visit nodejs.org. Now nodejs.org is a simple installation package. I would recommend you go to the latest version, whether that's 13 at the time of this recording or anything else. And in the download section, it will give you basically every single operating system you may have. So you got the Windows installer, you got the Mac OS installer. Once it is installed, what you should be able to do, I'll do this in a new tab so we don't cancel that, you should be able to run Node and have your Node package come in. Now, if you're wondering what the Node version is, you can say Node-V. That gives you that. And then you can say the same thing for NPM-V. They come together as a single package to so Node and npm, it all comes together in this one pre-compiled installer that you can use. So that's pretty cool. Now we notice here that the current version is 12.13 and I have 12.4, so I'm not too far off. And I have 6.12 and this is 6.13. So a little bit of an offset here on my version numbers, that's okay, not a big deal. But just know that if you're unable to run this one npm command because you don't have it installed, make sure that you download that as you're getting ready. So with that, let's let this install and we'll be right back. All right, npm install is done. So now we need to run npm run dev. I'll paste that command in and let's run that. So what this is doing is it's actually compiling all of this JavaScript into something our application can use. The first time that you run this though, it will need this view template compiler that doesn't ship with it. It'll grab it real quick and then it'll actually try to compile everything down. If this succeeds, you should see a green ready to go. If you get some errors, then you'll have to work through those. But this is what it looks like if everything is good to go. And just like that, if we go back here and we hit refresh, totally different thing. 
Now we have Bootstrap. Now it looks much better. And then check out the register page. And then let's log in. Let's see what we have in there instead. So there we go. We have a nice and ready to go Laravel application that we can start doing some stuff with it. So in the next lesson, let's jump into the next thing and we'll start building something a little bit more meaningful as a sample project.